Well, I want to go back to the beginning. We're going to go to Genesis chapter 4, and we're going to pick up in verse 2, and it's talking about Eve. And it says, again, she gave birth to his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of flocks, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. So right away, we know that Abel and Cain have two different callings, okay? So it came about in the course of time that Cain brought an offering to the Lord of the fruit of the ground. Abel, on his part, also brought of the firstlings of his flock and their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and for his offering. But for Cain and for his offering, he had no regard. So Cain became very angry and his countenance fell. Then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry and why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will not your countenance be lifted up? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door and its desire is for you, but you must master it. Cain told Abel, his brother, and it came about when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is Abel, your brother? And he said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? Side note, that doesn't really work when you tell your mom that. She didn't really like that when we were growing up because she would refer to how it didn't really work out very well. So anyway, it says, he said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. So what I want to say is when... Adam and Eve um, fell. Of course, that introduced a whole lot of stuff into the, to the earth, and it broke the pure uh, relationship that they had with God, the, just the beautifulness of it, walking in the garden in the cool of the morning, I mean, all that stuff. It broke it, but, and it introduced a lot that we still as people deal with, right? However, in my opinion, the biggest thing and the, and the worst of it that was introduced was shame, and shame was introduced when Adam and Eve fell. And shame has been haunting us since that time, right? And we all deal with it in different ways, and it is so dangerous, uh, shame. But I believe when Cain uh, did what he did, he introduced the seed of jealousy and comparison. And that is also a dangerous thing that we can fall into. When I was younger, I was seeing this guy, and um, I had a pastor come to me and say, hey, I just really want you to watch out because I, I feel like he's very a, je a jealous person, so I just want you to watch out. And when you're young and stupid, because that's what you are, you're stupid, it's like, well, he's jealous of me. This seems pretty good, right? That means he really likes me, right? And it's like, no, jealousy is so dangerous, and comparison is so dangerous, and we're seeing it rampant, unfortunately, in adults, too. And it's feeding down to our kids. The, the comparison, though, I mean, I wish I had that, or, or jealousy, where you are not going to like someone because they have something different than you, they're doing better, th it appears that they're doing better than you. Or maybe they are, their relationships look like they're better than yours. Or their mental health looks like we do not know. And comparison and jealousy is very dangerous. What God was saying to Cain was not that Cain was not good enough. That's not what God was saying. But Cain's heart was not in the right place. Abel was coming with respect and honor and humble before our Heavenly Father. And the Lord knew sin was crouching at Cain's door. And he knew that what Cain had in his heart was not pure, that he wasn't doing it from the right motive, that he was already comparing himself with his brother. And it is super dangerous to do. Just as much as shame has cost us things in our lives, and it does. And it, it's just, it's a disease. Sh uh, comparison and jealousy, I really encourage you. If you have those emotions creeping up on you, kill them. Get rid of them. Shut it down. Find out why you feel like you're lacking compared to other people because it is super dangerous. And it's dangerous for the people that you're inflicting it upon. When you are treating them because you think whatever, X, Y, Z, there it is. It causes division. And God has called us to be about unity and restoration. So I just really encourage you to stay on a jealousy in comparison. It is a dangerous thing. We're going to take our tithes and offerings right now. If you'll just stand, we're going to pray. It's good to see so many here today, and at the same time, we know there's still a lot of people that aren't feeling well and dealing with all sorts of things in life. So we're just going to come before our Heavenly Father and say, Jesus, we just thank you for um, what you're doing in our lives, and we pray for those who are not here, and we pray for those we know that are going through all sorts of circumstances. We pray for bodies to be healed and for relationships to be restored and finances, a solution for jobs, that things, that all sorts of things that have been going on. And we just thank you that you are such a good, good God. 
and that you don't compare us to one another, but you do see our heart and you do warn us of things that could be dangerous for us. And Lord, we just pray that we have eyes to see what you have for us to see and hearts that ha- seek your un- to understand you and ears to hear what you have to say to us. And those warnings are not out of anger or frustration, but out of complete love. So may we be aware. In your name I pray, amen.